Taking a closer look at the performance of the proximity transmitter that I built, you can see the nice clean sine wave with harmonics approximately 40 dB down. So a pretty clean oscillator circuit that can be easily modulated. Let's take a moment and modulate the carrier and look at the profile on the scope. By the way, before I forget to mention, check out the video description for a link to the schematic and bill of material. When we review the schematic in just a moment, you'll see R4, a precision 10K resistor. That allows us to optimize the uh, modulation profile. And a few seconds of audio from my Bluetooth receiver. My circuit layout that can be better optimized. Again, this was only my prototype build. And let me point out just a few adjustments on the board before reviewing the schematic and BOM in detail. You're looking at trimmer C3. It's in parallel with C1. This allows me to adjust the frequency from approximately 1150 to 1470 kilohertz in my design. You can see the second tank circuit, L2 and C7. I'm adjusting the trimmer C7 for maximum output based on my setting of C3. Looking at the circuit here, left to right, you'll notice my oscillator section. I'm leveraging a JFET 2N5457. It's a coal pits oscillator that's uh, identified by capacitors C1 and C2 tied to the source, and you can see that trimmer C3 that I have in parallel with C1 to uh, tweak the frequency output. The configuration again is a common gate, also known as a uh, grounded gate. It's a very stable oscillator. One disadvantage of this circuit is stray capacitance, so just keep that in mind. Keep your uh, lead lengths as short as possible. Again, you're tying your inductor L1 back into the uh, positive rail. So stray capacitance will come into play. So if you use an online calculator to calculate your frequency itself, it'll be just a little different due to the uh, stray capacitance of the circuit. A general practice for this particular design is to ensure that capacitor C2 is around 1000 divided by your frequency in megahertz that you're shooting for, and C1 would be 100 divided by the square root of the frequency in megahertz. So really that just puts C2 at about tenfold or ten times higher than C1 on average and that makes the oscillator extremely stable. Resistor R1 coming off the source back down to ground was chosen to uh, reduce and provide the best sine wave with the least amount of harmonic output. Additional tweaks could be made there by adding an additional resistor between C3 and C1 back over to the source if you elect to do so. You'll notice the oscillator output. I'm taking that off of the source. We're going through C4, a 30 picofarad capacitor, and we're supplying both inputs of the MC1350P, which is a monolithic IF amplifier that has an AGC input that we'll expand on more in just a moment. You can see we're bridging both inputs using R2, a 4.7K resistor. As you guys know that follow my channel, my previous builds, I've been using audio transformers, but I ran across an article by Joseph Carr and the article was entitled using the NE602 which can be used as an oscillator as well. Electronics Now, February 1997 and he showed a design for modulating an oscillator and this is a build off of uh, Mr. Carr's design. The beauty of the MC 1350P pin 5 you'll see is the uh, gain control or the AGC input and that allows us to take the two signals. So if you look at the schematic there in detail, you'll notice that I'm controlling the DC level by using R4 
and at the same time I'm taking the modulated signal input set by my source, that being my Bluetooth, in my case about 50% based on my design to optimize the uh, modulated carrier without distortion. You'll notice two bypass caps, C5 and C6, and I kept the uh, values the same at 0 0.047 microfarads to simplify the design. You can see I'm leveraging uh, L2 and C7. I had already touched on trimmer C7. Again, that's our second tank circuit, and uh, that's what we're using to uh, transmit the signal, which is now modulated, back over to the receiver in proximity to the transmitter itself. You'll notice L2, I'm just using a ferrite loop stick antenna coil. Again, I chose a 788 uh, micro Henry. And when we look at the BOM in my notes, you'll see I've referenced a source for the uh, particular trimmers and the antenna coil in addition to the uh, MC1350P. A very stable circuit, and you can see I'm powering it off of a rechargeable 9-volt battery, so just above uh, 8 volts, and the circuit seems to uh, be happy with that operating voltage. And a quick look at the bill of materials in my notes. I've got everything called out, a few miscellaneous things I probably failed to mention. You can see the frequency range of my particular unit. Again, there's stray capacitance, so uh, your results may be different. Uh, range, uh, just a few feet, and you can see the DC current around 12 milliamps. And again, one thing that I did do is the input audio level is extremely uh, low, about 50% on my uh, smartphone, back over to my Bluetooth, drives the uh, kind of the perfect level there to get maybe 80 to 90% modulation on the carrier. I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Hopefully you find it uh, helpful. You guys uh, take care. Stay well out there.